Okay, let's go ahead and focus on Euler's method now. This is a part of 9.2 that the AB kids will not be responsible for. Uh, it is another method of approximation uh, that will pop up on the AP exam. And in fact, in, uh, in a future video, I'm actually going to show you a couple of the AP questions that actually have shown up uh, in the last you know, however many years. But I want to tie this in with something that we've actually done in the past. Euler's method uh, is similar to other approximation methods that we've done. Okay, It's similar to linear approximation in the fact that we're using tangent lines to get an approximation. And it's also similar to Newton's method in the fact that it's an iterative process. Okay, It, it has more than one step. So let's go ahead and remind ourselves what linear approximation looks like. Now let's say that I am given the question, what is the square root of 10? Okay, And I don't have a calculator and I want a good approximation to a couple of, uh, to a couple of uh, decimal places. And I go, okay, well I tell you what, I don't know what root 10 is, but I certainly know what root 9 is. And if I can get a tangent line right here at root 9, I think that that tangent line would lay flat enough such that it would give me a very good approximation uh, if I were then to evaluate the tangent line at 10, it'll give me an approximation as to what root 10 is, okay? And if you didn't get that, I think you'll get it when we actually walk through the process. Now, y is equal to x to the 1 half gives me y prime is equal to 1 half x to the negative 1 half, okay? And then if I'm going to evaluate y prime at 9 in order to get a tangent line, I know that that's going to be 1 over 2 root 9 or 1 sixth, okay? So that's 1 sixth, and I know that I'm going to need y minus, well, Here's the thing, I'm looking at the tangent at that point right there. That's 9, 3. So it's y minus 3 is equal to 1 sixth x minus 9. So y minus 3 is equal to 1 sixth x minus, well, 9 sixths is going to be 3 halves. And so y is equal to 1 sixth x plus 3 halves. That is my tangent line, okay? Or I could just go ahead and graph it from here, right? I don't really need it in slope intercept form. I happen to know that it's going to be right here, and all I need to do is count back uh, six units and go down one, okay? And I'm going to get those points right there. That is going to give me a tangent line that runs right about there. Now, we are looking for the we're looking for the value here. But notice how close the tangent line value at x is equal to 10 is. It's here. So what I'm doing is I'm using a tangent line from a point that's sufficiently close to actually approximate the actual value there. And all I have to do is go down here and use the slope intercept form and say, okay, well, y of 10 is 1 sixth times 10 plus 3 halves. And of course, 10 over 6 winds up being 5 thirds. So 5 thirds plus 3 halves, 5 thirds is 1.6, you know, repeated, and that's 1.5. And so it winds up being 3.1 and the 6 repeated. And if you take root 10, you're going to get something very, very close to that. Now, what we, what the whole, the whole thing behind this was using a tangent line sufficiently close, okay? What we're going to be doing with Euler's method is something similar, okay? Let's say that we are given this slope field. Y, or say we're given the differential equation uh, dy dx is equal to x plus y. We've seen that before. And let's say 
that um, that we're given the initial condition y of 0 is equal to 1. Okay. Well, you know, you could come through here and actually sketch that out. Uh, you know, 0, 1 winds up being right about here. Okay. And so you know that it kind of does this number and that when you trace it back, it probably kind of, it has a shape that's roughly like that, okay? But you don't know how to get to the actual solution of this. And let's say that you are asked for uh, y of 0 0.4. Well, remember when I likened a slope field to walking through a crowd? Like you're at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, you're at a Texans game or something like that, and you're walking through the crowd. You have to walk through, like with the flow of the crowd. Now let's do a thought experiment. Let's say that you have this weird disorder that allows you only to walk in straight lines, okay? But you want to move with the crowd for the most part. What you do is you walk in a straight line in the direction that the crowd is going and you walk a few paces. But at that point, the crowd's direction may have shifted, so you have to stop, readjust, and walk a few more paces in a straight line, and then stop, and then adjust based upon where the, f the traffic is flowing at the point where you are, okay? That's approximately what's going on here with Euler's method. What we're going to do is we're going to take a linear we're going to take a tangent line from this point and we're going to go a little ways out. And then we're going to take we're going to take the output, we're going to take the ordered pair from that tangent line and then reassess everything, give us a new tangent line, a new trajectory and move out in that direction again. Okay, so let's say, and of course, you'll be given several different things. You'll be given a differential equation, you'll be given where to start, and you'll be given where to end up, okay? Differential equation, initial condition, what you're looking for. Now, you need one more thing. How big of a step are you taking? Now, obviously, you know, you can get from 0 to 0.4 in four steps if your, you know, delta x is 0.1. But let's actually not use that. Let's do one that's a little bit easier since this is our first example. Let's do it in two steps, each of those steps being 0.2, okay? And I'm probably going to use fractions because that's just who I am. Now, here's the thing. We need to basically figure out our first tangent line. So our first tangent line, and we know that it's y is equal to mx plus b, okay, or, you know, if you so choose, and it's probably going to, this is actually going to be the way that you're going to be doing it, is that, okay? You're going to be using point slope. Now, obviously, the slope comes from the differential equation. So in the first step, okay, step one, you're going to be you're going to be given a ordered pair. Now that ordered pair is our initial condition. I'm going to take that ordered pair and let's call it y prime instead of dy dx, and I'm going to evaluate y prime at that ordered pair, zero plus one. So my y prime, my slope is one. I have point. I have slope. And therefore, I have y minus y1 is equal to mx minus x1, which, oh, sorry, that's supposed to be a 0. And that gives me y is equal to x plus 1. y is equal to x plus 1 is our first tangent line. And I'm actually going to go ahead and draw that. It's really easy. We see, I mean, we see negative 1 over here. So that is my first tangent line. It lines up perfectly, and we're going to step out here to point 2, and we're going to get that point right there, okay? So let's go ahead and do that, okay? Now we have a tangent line. Since we can't trace this curve right here, we're going to trace the tangent line 
and then what we're going to do is we're going to set off in a new trajectory that is more consistent with the flow of the slope field. Okay. So let's go ahead and we have to, we have to evaluate this function now at one fifth. So we're going to go ahead and this is our step two. We have to get our ordered pair. Our ordered pair comes from the fact that we're going to evaluate y, meaning this y. We'll call that y1. Use whatever notation your, your teacher asks you to do. We're going to evaluate that tangent line at 1 fifth. So that's going to be 1 fifth, 6 fifths. So our ordered pair is 1 fifth, 6 fifths. Now, let's go ahead and evaluate. Now, let's go ahead and evaluate the differential equation at that ordered pair and we get 7 fifths. I have point, I have slope, and I can do y minus 6 fifths is equal to 7 fifths x minus 1 fifth. And while the fractions are a little bit nasty, what you get is you get 7 fifths x minus 7 20 fifths. 7 20 fifths plus 30 fifths is 23 20 fifths. Now, I'm not going to try to graph that, but just, just suffice it to say that 7 fifths is a steeper slope, so it's going to set off in this direction. Uh, I mean, I, I guess I could try, but let's, let's not. I'm going to set off, in, and basically it's going to set off a little bit steeper, and we're going to get a tangent line that comes up here and gives us at point 0.4 another value. Now notice that it's it's diverging away from the actual curve. And we can get a better approximation if we just use a smaller step, right? If we use the step of 0.1 or 0.05 or 0.001 or, or a really, really small step, we actually could get a much better approximation. Of course, that would make our arithmetic down here just burdensome to say the least, okay? And then in order to find our approximation, we need to evaluate y2 at our point 4, and what we're going to get is we're going to get 14 25ths minus, and actually this should be positive, sorry about that, uh, this should be positive um, uh, plus 23 25ths um, and that's going to wind up being 37 20 fifths. And that is going to be our approximation. Okay. Now, it's, it's a little bit ugly, uh, but that is basically what's going on here. We are actually using, we're using tangent lines iteratively and reassessing the trajectory of those lines as I move each delta x, each step over step over, reassess the trajectory, and set out, and then get an ordered pair that approximates the curve. And then reassess, set out a new trajectory, and get another ordered pair that approximates the curve, and over and over and over again. Now, um, I don't know how in-depth your teacher is going to be going into this, uh, you can actually, and I may actually do this in one of, in, in one of the later videos, since this is an iterative sort of thing, and it is very predictable where the values are coming from, you can actually, for ones that involve, you know, 10, 20, whatever steps, or ones that involve really ridiculous arithmetic, you can actually uh, use an Excel spreadsheet and just set up the, set up the, uh, set of the equations such that they pull information from other cells in order to reevaluate uh, what's going on. And I actually already have one set up and I think all I would have to do is just change the equation and change the step and stuff like that. Uh, I may or may not show that to you but I just want to at least bring it up so that you know that it's a possibility, okay? Um, we're gonna go ahead and call this video quits right here. I think we may actually take this particular uh, slope field and do another do another uh, Euler's method problem with it based upon a, 
on a different starting point. Uh, but I want to explore also some other ones and eventually get to uh, one or two of the AP questions that have been asked in the last 10 or 15 years uh, on, on this sort of method, uh, because I think that'll also be instructive concerning sort of where they're going and what they're actually expecting you to know uh, from this method that they're asking you to learn. Uh, that, that's it for video one. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, please do email me. Bye.